like I said, uh, we were planning to do an engagement party, proposal party uh, when we were in high school, but we never talked about it or said anything about it because he was from another uh, city, the school that he was programmed to, and I was programmed to the school that I was living at. I was programmed in Alamo and in FAR. So what they did, because he didn't have all the information correctly at his school, they moved us to the to the city that he was going to school at. But his house wasn't there. His house was over there um, in the city that I was at. I was in FAR. But when I was in the call, the message, and the voicemail with him, but when we were together in the relationship, when he would pick me up and I would go, go to his house, my mom was the one helping us, but we didn't live in FAR. He lived in FAR, but we, we were living in Alamo. And when we were in Alamo, he was uh, for two semesters with me at his house in FAR. But I was registered to the school program in Alamo at that time. And I was living in Alamo. And that house is not mine. We were just there for some time. We are having problems because um, uh, when we were in school, uh, we were in fights and relationships at a very young age, a little bit after the age of 10. So they're expecting for me to welcome everybody in again, even though I'm not in Alamo or far. And they're expecting for me to accept everybody again, even if it's not uh, because of school, even if it's not because of the family, even if it's because of the neighbors. You help me, I help you. I help you, you help me. I help you, you help me. That's the way it is with everybody. Whether you're at school, whether you're at work, whether you're at the house, whether you're at a store, whether you're at the neighbor's house, Wherever you go, it's always like that. Keep it friendly and keep the respect and always help others. You help me, I help you. You help me, I help you. That's the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, I was so, so happy with my family that even on my worst days at their house with the family only and visitors from other people that came to see the family, we never had any problem, not even when we were at the lowest of the income or uh, possible needs that we had there in FAR. But as soon as I went to Alamo and I started living with my ex-boyfriend, who I was with for two years, uh, everything's been very bad. Uh, both uh, marriage, relationships, family, neighbors, and friends. And I haven't received any visits, any calls, or any invites from any of them. I always have to beg them so they could want to come and see me or take me out to eat. And at school, we always go to gym class and to the cafeteria every day, Monday through Friday. Not just once a year or once a month. Almost every day of the week and almost all year long. That's what you're supposed to do at your house every day or at least two to three times a week. If you cannot do that, to be outside for an hour every day, that's bad. Yes, it looks bad because you're blaming everybody that was there and they have nothing to do with that. They were there to help and you are there to help them too. Now, it's true. We cannot be paying for everybody that was there because you're supposed to pay your own drink, your own smokes and your own stuff. Especially if you're not with your family or with your friends. If you don't know the person, say no and walk away. Because they're going to want to be drinking, smoking, driving, having sex, uh, going to parties, going to the store. And you don't have a driver's license or insurance for the car that you have. And the car's not even yours. And you're already paying for all that. And they don't even know you. They don't even talk to you. They don't even come and see you or anything. That looks bad. Now, it's true. If you're older, you're supposed to look for the person when you need something from them. Not only when you need something from them, but when you need to be there for them. What I notice is that I could be at the hospital looking for help for years and nobody will care. Nobody will want to be there. And that is what happened. That. 
But something happens to them and they want me to feel sorry for them, to feel uh, responsible for them, to feel like the bad person for them. When they are the the reason why we cannot be happy with the family or with work or at school or at the house. We have moved, we have moved more than five different residentials in the past 15 years. We have changed the phone more than, more than 20 times in the past 15 years. We have changed the car more than five times in the past 15 years. And believe me when I tell you that we can feel when there's something wrong or when there is a problem. So for you to be uh, running from the teachers, the students, the employees, the neighbors, the family, the friends, it, me it makes me feel that you were running from someone or something. Like if you, if you were feeling like you were, uh, like if someone was out to get you and that you couldn't run away from the person, that's what it looks like. Especially with all the hospital visits that the family has made, with all the police reports that the family has made, and all the stories that the family has shared. Now, not everybody that's in the family right now was there when all the problems uh, started for the adults. But the little ones, I was one of them, was there. And there was lots of very ugly stories, not just from us, but from other people that lived there in the area. And we didn't see it like that because when you're a kid and you're with your family, you won't see it like that. But when you bring in an in-law in or a person that you were in a relationship with into the family and the person is telling you what to do at your house, it looks bad. Because if you don't even know them, they're not even from the family or anything, then they're not supposed to be there. An in-law is a person who is married to you uh, by law because they've been with you for more than six months at your house and you're having sex with them, you have kids with them, you live with them and everything. Okay, those are in-laws, that. But when you have, when you have uh, a boyfriend and he doesn't touch you sexually, doesn't get sexually involved with you and you don't live with the person in the same address and you're wondering why you're still uh, in the relationship, if you don't communicate with the person or talk to the person, it makes you wonder because you want to know why the person was always there, but why they didn't have interest in you as a friend. Like I said, a friend is a person who is there for you to help you to be there for you for, for a better purpose than what you have with a person that you don't know. If you've known this person for more than five years, more than 10 years, more than 15 years, and you're in a relationship with the person, then you are already in-laws, especially if the person lives with you. But if the person doesn't live with you in the same house and is not there with you and you don't talk to them, you don't know nothing about them, then it's not a relationship. But it is, but he is a friend because a friend is a person who is there to help, to be there for you. That's what we're there for, to help one another. That's what people are there for. But when a person is always threatening your mom, threatening your dad, threatening your grandma, threatening your grandpa, threatening your aunt, threatening your uncle, threatening your cousin, threatening you, it becomes a problem. Because the, the uncle, the aunt, the grandma, the grandpa, the mom, the dad, the daughter, the son, the cousin, the nephew, everybody that was there is going to know what they were doing against the family that lives there or the people that live around the area. Especially if you're talking really bad about their family and you're always at their house and you're always using of the girls that they have in the family and you're always using of the people there. It looks bad. They're not going to tell you that, but that's really why they were uh, in a bad mood because you're always expecting them to tell you yes, and you're always expecting them to help you, but you don't want to help them in return. So it looks bad. But yes, um, it is uh, a lot uh, a lot different now than how it was 15 years ago for us as students. 
I was in school in FAR and in Alamo here in Texas, uh, FAR, Texas. So we went to school here in Alamo and in FAR. But right now we are not in Alamo. We are in San Juan. And my parents, they don't live together since I was like two, three, four, five years old around that time. And so now my dad and my mom, uh, they don't live with me. I live alone. And I don't know anybody here in San Juan. I don't talk to them or anything because they are not the same age as me. And they, they didn't go to the same school as me or anything. And like I said, I was a student when I dated the guy that went to school here in San Juan, in Bears. But his family residential wasn't here in San Juan. It was over there in FAR, which is why we have problems right now with the family and friends that we have from school and the neighborhood that we come from because they're giving the wrong information and they're making us responsible for visitors that we had in the house at that time when we lived in FAR and when we lived in Alamo. So we ended up here in San Juan, Texas, uh, in the school county of Bears. But we don't know anyone. Like, we remember some of them, but we don't talk to them or anything because they are not... They are not my classmates. They're classmates of my friend, some friend of mine. But I don't want to give out the name or anything because we have gang-related problems of other students and neighbors that we have at other friends' houses, but over there in FAR. And I didn't live in FAR when I was dating the guy that went to school here in San Juan. I was living in Alamo. I was a resident of Alamo, and I was a student at the Alamo High School of Wolverines when the person from here from San Juan from Bears and me had problems at school at his house and mine. But I was living in Alamo and he was living in FAR, but he was a student here at Bears in San Juan. So he lied about his residential so he could get accepted in the school of Bears. But he was not in the same school as me, so he didn't know any of my friends. If he does, It's not because of me. It's because of other people that he knows. That's the reason why I didn't introduce him to any of them. Because we were already having problems uh, at my family's and friend's house over there in FAR and in Alamo. And I never introduced him either to any of my friends over there in FAR when I was a student at Raiders over there in FAR. So if he knows them or talks to them, it's not because I tell them to. It's not because I took them uh, to their house, but because he has been getting information out from people that know me, not because I'm his wife or his girlfriend or his sister or his mom, but because we used to live together in high school. We were talking about engagement proposal, but it but it but uh, it didn't happen for us the way the way we wanted it to happen, and we've been waiting to see what happens ever since. Like uh, we were very happy together, but the problem is that once you're an in law. You start to move in with the person, especially if you lived with the person for more than six months. If the person lived with you for more than six months and you were married to them or you're engaged with them or they're your in-laws, then you already have a relationship. You only get married once in your life and you have to believe in the religion. You have to believe in God because that's what's going to help you to become a better person, not only for yourself, but for you and your wife or you and your husband, because that's what's going to help you spiritually to become a better person, not because of your neighbor, not because of your family, not because of your classmates, not because of the employees that you have at work, but because of you and your wife or because of you and your husband. That's how you're going to know if they really love you and really want to be with you or if there's something that you got to fix between you and her or between you and me in the relationship. Like I said, I never took them to any of the houses. I never introduced them to any of them, not even in FAR or in Alamo, because we do have problems at school since the age of 12, 13, and 14 years old. Right now, my dad is really sick at the hospital and we cannot go see him because we have personal problems right now with people that are not from the family, people that are not from the same uh, group of people that know me and people that have been getting information out from the family and classmates that we have at school. I'm not a student anymore. I didn't finish my goals and plans that I had for school. 
I still have goals and plans for school for a better education since I was uh, 17, 18 years old. And yes, I'm disabled, but it doesn't mean that I can't, that I that I gotta give up on my life and everything for another person. I've been in the hospital before, not once or twice, but a lot of times. And believe me, no one has gone to visit to help us get out of the problem when we're there. The only ones that go and help are my parents or my parents, brothers and sisters, nobody else. So those are the only people helping with chicken plates for the church, both for the wedding and the funerals. And they're also helping with uh, school supplies and help for the family, only for the family. School supplies and help for school. Uh, it's because we have some people that worked for the school in the family. Not the school that I went to or that he went to, but that worked at the public schools here in the, in the Rio Grande Valley. Not just my mom, not just my dad or my uncle, but some other people that we know from friends and family that have parents and relatives that have worked for the school. You are like that because you chose to not look for help. That's not my fault. You need to look for help before it's too late. And be believe me when I tell you that the word of God is very powerful and that God is real. Jesus Christ uh, gave his life for us on, on that cross and raised up to, to a certain degree and is who, who is known to have saved his believers and his followers. And Jesus Christ only saves those who believes in him, who who uh, worship him, and who respect him for who he is as a as a as our God. 